Hello everyone, Allie here and welcome to the gold mine. Thank you for joining me here on another episode at Allie's Treasure Trove. Today we do have a new episode of Allie Chat and I'm very curious to see how this episode goes because I felt like I looked really cute today. Did want to go ahead and use this Game of Thrones Urban Decay palette because it does have a nice purple inside to match my little outfit here. But in all honesty, I was debating not filming today because I really don't know what to talk about today. So if this is a not so talkative Allie Chat, I do apologize. But I am ready to get on started here. I'm filming a little bit earlier than normal in the day. It is 5.16 p.m. on Wednesday, April 14th. So I'm looking forward to getting those Titan Cards videos recorded and checking out the new 2021 Panini Origins Basketball. And then also later tonight, I do actually have to film Thursday's episode of Alley Play. So I have a lot on my plate today, ready to get started. So let's go ahead and check this thing on out and then we'll get on into it. Now, you guys know, I don't really know much about Game of Thrones, but I really like the aesthetic. So when Urban C Decay announced this set, like it even comes with the Iron Throne little pop out, I was obsessed. Unfortunately, missed out on grabbing the little brushes. Uh, I was like, oh, I don't need to buy them right now. They're cute. But what am I going to do with them? I have brushes. And then I decided I wanted them like a day or so later and they were all sold out. It was cute. They were in the shape of little swords. Uh, but this is a very clunky palette. I have used it a few times, but the reason I really wanted to use this is because I actually rediscovered it in my room the other night. I was actually looking for my Kaiba binder of Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I was completing, I decided to take the plunge and complete my Kaiba collection, legendary collection Kaiba uh, set. So actually when all those singles come in, I'll probably have an unboxing and just kind of chatty put, putting my set together video. Uh, that's the plan there. I have way too many different packages coming from TCG Player. I think it's a total of 20, 23 packages, 21, 23 packages, somewhere in there of just random Yu-Gi-Oh singles. And I also did go ahead and grab that Mob Psycho Triple R that was the Naked Flying Tree Man because it's just a really funny looking card. Uh, finally remembered to grab that. But I was looking for that binder and this was like in the pile. It wasn't with the rest of my palettes and I was like, I want to use this. So this has like a lot of really awesome colors probably be dipping into here just to match with the purple but if I feel compelled to try something else may go ahead and do that I like that you could just pull it out of this because this looks cool it's but it's more decorative than useful it's huge it's clunky it's hard to carry around um, but I do like that this pulls out like mainly it's just the packaging so you could pop out the throne like that's it but it looks really cool I know some people weren't crazy about it when it came out but I like the blue I like the purple and the whole reason I initially was drawn to this palette because when I saw the advertisements I saw that green so maybe I'll try and do a green look with that sometime in the near future. Completely forgot that I had it. It slipped my mind. I have used it for previous videos, live streams here on the channel. Not recently though, because like I said, kind of got a little bit misplaced and I was like, oh, cool. But actually, what should I use as my mirror? I'll just go ahead, not that one, that's the Divine palette. I don't like using that for the mirror, but I'll probably go ahead and use the Pastel Goth Cat on D1 for the mirror. I tend to use that one a lot, I've noticed. So grab that because I don't want to have to set up the giant box for my mirror. But I'm using the Urban Decay one. I don't think my little Fenty trial size is empty, but I'm tired of having to fight it to get out product. So I'll probably finish that off on not an alley chat because I don't want to have to like fast forward through me trying to get stuff out of that little container. But I am back using, I have now a full size Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion. And I think the little foot it's not on properly because I feel like I poke myself with like some sharp plastic whenever I put it on so I just try to really kind of throw it on there flat instead of like kind of brushing it along because then I'm like oop that hurts so also it made me realize how much eyeshadow I wasn't using uh struggling with that little tiny Fenty one oops I blink I, I looked up a little bit and it got on top of my crease whatever so let's go ahead and get that all over my lid which I feel like also my colors have been a bit more rich recently because I think I am actually using the appropriate amount of eye primer who'd have thought who'd have thought that using products the way you were supposed to actually get you good results not me definitely not me but all right I have like a dark purple here so maybe I can go inner corner fade out into this one so from bend the knee into stormborn Ooh. sounds very fancy grab some brushes have my bag here of brushes but didn't pull out the actual brushes yet and I know I still sound kind of stuffed up hopefully it's not too distracting I am feeling much better now it's just my nose and I'm still waiting for my ears to pop 
So hopefully by the time you guys are actually watching this episode of Alley Chat, my ears have popped and I can hear normally again. But I feel like everything just still sounds super weird, especially the sound of my own voice. Now, since these are both shimmers, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that trick. Uh, that's typically reserved for like Max Fix Plus, but it works with really any setting spray. Or, well, that's what I've heard. I use it with the Urban Decay All Nighter because that's what I use. That's what I have. As I always say, not a professional, but I get the job done here. So let me make sure I actually use the wet side. And like I said, I was going to go in with the bend the knee. It's cute. Right. This is a little bit awkward. I do like that it pulls out. Last time, actually, I used it when I, was at, when I still did my makeup at home. So actually, in my bathroom, there's a lot of mirrors. So it actually wasn't too much of a pain. But I could see, I'm definitely seeing here as, as I'm sitting here trying to get ready you know imagining myself at like a little makeup desk like maybe in my bedroom or something you know if I had space for stuff uh, I could see why people were thought it looked really cool but definitely not functional packaging but hey the product works well that's the main important thing just a little bit of a pain in the butt because even how I like that it pulls out into this giant slab it, it's like I want to be able to like just be right here and do it, but I can't. It's just shadows, no mirror. Looks really cool though, looks really cool. All right, let's go in this side. This is super cute. Don't really know why I ever put this palette down. Probably had to dig something out for a specific look and then was like, oh, I'm obsessed with this palette now. That honestly is most likely what happened. I feel like I go through phases where it's like, oh, I just want to use this for like two weeks straight. And then I'm like, I don't want to use this anymore. I feel like that Toy Story meme where, where whatever, I don't know if it's Andy or the other kid where it's like, I don't want to play with you anymore. But all right. Let me continue here. Really love this shimmer. Love the color. I think I may have mentioned this before, but I really like the color purple. I feel like it looks good on me. But I only own two different purple shirts. I have this one, and I have that retro-colored Tampa Bay Rays one. <laughs> so I don't have much purple, which is why you guys don't see me wear purple very often. But I do really like the color. I just, just don't have. <laughs> don't know why. Don't know why, honestly. I feel like I don't find too much purple stuff. So it's probably a mix of not finding a lot, and then not, well, I don't want to say not liking, but being very particular with what I buy for my clothes. If it's not an anime shirt, I'm typically very picky. So, all right, let's get this a little bit darker here. Not as dark as I would have expected in comparison. That could also be because I don't have much pigment on my lids yet. All right, there we go. cute I like it I like it you make sure especially because I don't use eyeliner because I can't draw straight lines and I also don't necessarily like the way it looks like even when I've had people draw eyeliner on me back in the days when you know you could have the people do like sample makeup for you at like Sephora the Mac counters and whatnot I was never really crazy about the look but I gotta make sure I tend, I don't know what it is, I don't know if I'm just doing something wrong, but I've noticed I, I tend to have a hard time, I probably just don't have primer there for some reason, I gotta make sure, I guess I mix the primer around my whole eyelid, but I tend to have difficulty getting eyeshadow to stick right up against my eyelashes. I wanna make sure, if you guys see me dabbing real close, like right here, it's cause I'm trying to get, there's like, I always see like right in the middle of my lid, there's always like an empty spot, I'm like, or it could be an optical illusion just the way I look up and I'm actually seeing my top waterline and I think it's empty space. Definitely one of those two things. Definitely one of those two. But. All right, let me, let me concentrate a little bit. I'm stabbing myself in the eye right now. For beauty. All right. Let me see if I can bring this side out a little bit more so I don't have to clean up as much on this side. I do still need 
I've noticed I haven't quite gotten, I don't know, if, I don't really want to call this a technique because I don't feel like this is a technique. But I'm always trying to improve my application skills. So I did bring out a lower this so you guys might be able to look at my head or my eyes. It looks like I do have this a little less than this side. And when I look straight on, it's not as noticeable. If I raise my eyebrows, I can tell that it looks like there's a little bit brought out more. So let me try and clean that up a little. All right, that's, I think, a little bit better. And let me go ahead and clean any fallout, which is why I do my eyes first. I know most people don't. But instead of just being extra careful to avoid fallout or, like, complaining about products that have fallout, just do my eyes first. <laughs> because there have been multiple times where I'm like, I, you know, I used to try to do, you know, face first and eyes. Because typically, actually, you do need to do your face first if you do eyeliner. Because otherwise, you know, if you do, like, a wing or anything, it will get covered up by foundation. But I don't have, I can avoid that. Haha. <laughs> Uh -huh. But there have been times where like I'm just trying an eye look and I'm like that looks like garbage and then I gotta take it all off and then I mess up and I take out like a chunk and then I try to redo my foundation in that one spot and then it just looks super patchy and then I'm like ah give up just start over everything. So if I just avoid that issue in the first place, good to go. But alright. Also I don't know what happened to my little mini mascara. Did have the little tiny version of Urban Decay Perversion. Do like that one a lot. I still switch between that one in the week and also the little gift one I had from Katya Beauty Style, the Dior Show one. I like that one a lot too. But I think I'm going to just go kind of Urban decay -y all over the eyes today. So let me go ahead and put that on and then we will be done with the eyes. So the majority of what takes time here is almost done. Which is good because like I said, I want to try and get on into those videos today just because I don't feel like staying too late. So two tro videos, three regular videos today is what I have for my goal for filming. Because also now that the channel is monetized, and sure some, some of you have noticed, some of you that have adblock probably haven't noticed a thing at all. Uh, but on the Titan Cards channel, I forgot that it was like this, but it used to be. Now over there, I have it where, because it trusts how I self-rate, because I've never had any issues with monetization on either channel, actually. Uh, it just automatically gives me ads. And then it'll check afterwards, and if it finds something wrong, it'll be like, hey, we're taking away your ads. But I've never had that happen, so it, ju it just trusts me. It's like, all right, you, you self-rate the stuff, sounds good, all right, ads. Uh, whereas actually, YouTube does whatever checks it needs to do. Still on the trove, I don't, I can't just be like, it's ready to go as soon as I need it to be. So when I used to, like, about like a month, a month and a half or so ago, you know, if I didn't feel up to filming on a Wednesday night, just come in early on Thursday, export it, publish it, boom, it's ready to go. Um doesn't really work like that anymore so do actually need to be filming either super early to have it have enough time I've noticed especially because I have longer videos uh, videos are about 10 minutes take about 30 minutes but I've noticed videos here you know upwards of 30 minutes to 40 minutes sometimes even hour long it does take a really long time for all those checks to run so I don't really have enough time <laughs> to film unless I come in maybe like try something you know, because the alley plays usually take 45 minutes to an hour, I feel like. The Hearthstone ones have been getting a little bit shorter, but then I, I talk a lot, so. I'm No, I'm putting away the mirror. That's not what I wanted to do here. So, definitely need to actually get back into the habit of filming on Wednesday nights for Thursday. Which reminds me, I still need to go ahead and pick out what comment I'd like to feature in that episode. Also, because I film on Monday and this video goes up on Sundays, for Alley Chats are on Sundays, uh, won't go ahead and do a feature comment in this video, but most likely we'll go ahead and do that on Tuesday's episode. So make sure to watch out for that. But just because I want to make sure I have enough responses to pick from, I don't want to run into a situation like actually I had last week, uh, where I was like, I don't want to film, you know, I'm not 100% up to it. And also I don't have an answer. I said I was going to answer. I was going to do... Not this past week, but the week prior was going to do that Trove Mail Academic. I didn't have an answer to my question that I had posed. I was like, oh, next video. So I didn't have an answer just quite yet. So I don't want to rush you guys, let you guys watch the videos at your own pace. And if you do have a thoughtful response to those questions I posed throughout the video, um, give you guys time to think about that. Don't want to rush myself. Don't want to rush you guys. Uh, so I won't be having a question in this video, but I should be having one on Tuesdays. 
All right. That was a really long-winded explanation for stuff you guys probably don't think too much about, but I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit insight into the alley brain. And of course, I started this episode saying, I don't know what to talk about. What am I going to talk about? This is going to be a short alley chat. Oh, no. Ooh. And then it's like, blah, 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 blah. The art of talk. Art of talk. Allie sounds weird and talks. But all right, here we go. Let's get my foundation on. My skin, I feel like, has been looking pretty good the past few days. So I'm happy about that. Felt like it wasn't super noticeable that I wasn't wearing makeup on Tuesday on the Titan Cards channel. I, well, I did my eyes. I like doing my eyes. It's been very few times that I don't do my eyes when I don't do my face. There has been a couple times that I've done it, been like ultra lazy, but most of the time I do my eyes. And I feel like this week, the only way you'd be able to tell if I wasn't wearing foundation when I do the eyes is because whenever I put eyeshadow on my lids and whatnot, I feel like my under eyes look significantly darker. I feel like it just, I think it's probably like a mental thing. Like it just draws your focus towards the eyes and you're like, oh, Allie looks like a raccoon. You're like, Allie looked like a raccoon before too, but you weren't really paying attention. Uh huh. Bamboozling myself, but. I feel like in general, acne-wise, knock on wood, skin's been looking better recently. That's good. Haven't really cut back on my coffee intake. But in general, I'm eating a bit healthier, so. Hopefully it's here to stay, although it probably won't as we're getting into, you know, I think it was in the 90s again today, so getting into perma-hot Florida time. So. Oily Alley will return, which means I will have more acne, but hopefully not. I'm, I'm very happy to keep the good skin here while it lasts. Like, right now, I feel like you can tell my under eyes are super dark. I don't know what it is. Past few days, you know, it's like my allergies be, like, good throughout the day, and then for some reason, like, between, like, midnight and 2 a.m., it's like, cough, 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 cough. It's like, I'm just trying to sleep. Why is this such a pain? I don't know what it is. Like, anytime it's like, oh, you want to sleep? No. So I haven't actually been sleeping too much. And it's weird. I'll be waking up early, too. Like, the other day I fell asleep, like, 3, and I woke up at 5. I was like, what? Of course I went back to sleep. But I was like, why did my body decide to just wake up right now? I'm not hungry. I don't have to use the restroom. Like, why am I awake? My brain said, wake up, for no reason. Yeah, but hopefully that passes. Hopefully I get back to being able to fall asleep easily. Like, even actually last night for me, I was looking at Naruto memes on Tumblr to like 3.30 in the morning because I just couldn't sleep. And I was like, well, may as well have fun. May as well have fun while I can't sleep. Like, what's the point of being awake? What am I supposed to do, stare at the ceiling? That doesn't help. Maybe if I look at a screen, my eyes will eventually get tired and I'll just pass out. And that's the logic. As I saw some good quality Naruto memes. Some of them were not very appropriate, but I like them. So that's what I was doing last night. Then I woke up today. Actually, when my alarm rang, I didn't end up waking up any early. I went, got up, went to Einstein's, got my breakfast that I like to get. Why did I put more on the tip? I didn't mean to do that. I guess I can just kind of spread it out. Don't want to waste my powder, but all right. And then I actually went down to Emerald City. They post on Facebook, they got a bunch of hot toys. And they had some stuff that like I've considered for some time. And I'd have to check. Last time I checked on eBay, it was around 400, but the Red Skull hot toy, I still like it. I've heard from a person that's had, like, you know, bought one and then, like, ah, sell it, I don't want it anymore. And then they're like, I forget, I regret that I sold it, let me buy another one. They've been through three of the Red Skull, and two out of the three started having issues when on display of the Red Skull's coat disintegrate, like, the coat that he wears, just disintegrating. Now, to be fair, it is a pretty old hot toy, it's from the first Captain America movie, which is, I want to say pre-2010. I haven't heard of any other Hot Toy figures having this issue besides the Red Skull, but they had one, and they actually had a regular Captain America. I don't remember what the original one looks like, but I do like the Avengers Endgame. Yeah, Endgame, the uh, the retro. The 2012 was Avengers, so the 2012 throwback one. I like that one, so I don't know that I'd necessarily want to buy that original OG Captain America one. Another older Captain America I would buy would probably be the Winter Soldier, the special edition where he's actually in street clothes, because I don't think any other ones exist. But I like this Red Skull. But I'm like, I don't know if I want to spend this much money. I'm going to think about it. I didn't even ask them to get it down, because I went before the shop opened. We open at noon. 
I showed up 15 minutes. I show up whenever I want. Sue me. Whatever. But, um, I was just putzing around. Of course, I, I found Naruto Funko Pop. So I now own three different Naruto ones. Uh, he was in the background for like one uh, one or two videos on Titan Cards Channel, and then I reorganized the shelf. Uh, but I do have the Jiraiya with Toad. I have that one. And now I own Pain. Haven't gotten... I just finished getting through the fights with Kakuzu and Hidan. So I don't know what Pain does yet. I just know what he looks like. And I've seen memes, so like I know that's what his name is. But I don't know anything about him. But the pop looked really cool. And I've seen that there's like different like glow-in-the-dark chases or like weird exclusives that have different glows. I'm like, whatever. The regular one looks cool. And I also picked up a Shikamaru because it looked cool. They also had a Kabuto, but he looked weird. Maybe when I get to the point where Kabuto has snakes and whatnot, I'll understand it. I'll be like, that looks really cool. But right now, I'm like, I don't know. Anyways, let me... So now I own three different Naruto Funko Pops, and they're not even actual Naruto. <laughs> I remember seeing when the Shippuden one started coming out, there's the one where he's like Naruto running, and I was like, that's cute, but I've never seen Naruto. I shouldn't buy this. Let's have self-control. Now, of course, you can't find that one very easily anymore. I'm sure, actually, I'm debating. Let me know what you would do in the comments. Not for, like, a featured thing or anything, but I'm just asking for you guys' feedback. Later this year, MegaCon Orlando is going to try and, like, do their convention again. I think it's in, like, August. Part of me wants to go. Part of me is like, eh. But usually conventions like that have, like, people that bring a ton of Funko Pops. I'm sure I could find a bunch of different higher-end Naruto Pops there. Part of me wants to go just to look around. Then I'm like, every time I go to a convention, I spend too much money. Because I go to there to shop. You know, it's like, that's why I like, I spend money to get in to spend money. It's like, just, I wish you could just get into the dealer halls for free. And then if you wanted to do anything else, you had to pay money. But it doesn't work like that. Which is why I try to get free tickets to anything as much as possible. I know I've talked about that on previous Alley Chats. Uh, but I'm tempted to go. Let me know if you'd feel comfortable going. Florida's been doing pretty well uh, with their rates, so... I still haven't been able to get mine yet, but waiting in line. I'm checking Publixes and whatnot for when they list new stuff. I keep not setting my alarm though. I think they update their website at like seven, 7 a.m. <laughs> this blush is already you know breaking apart as it is. I was like, oh no, hopefully it doesn't actually bust. I keep forgetting. I mean to bring. I have a different lawn comb. I want to go ahead and pick this one up, but the Sephora sale is on right now. And they have other Lancome products, but they don't have Lancome blush on their website. I'm like, man. I remember I'd actually bought these at Ulta. Is when I had been foundation shopping. And I, I didn't mind it, but I wasn't crazy about it. I feel like it didn't last very well. The the Fenty foundation actually is the one I found that lasts for me the longest. Although I still have issues with, you know, getting oily and whatnot. But for me, that's the one that's worked the best. Uh, but the lady did manage to sell me a blush because I thought it was cute. And then I got another, I think another one at uh, TJ Maxx because I was like, this works well for me. It's an orangey color. I'll just pick it up. So I actually have a different one. It's not the same one. It's a bit or more orangey, but maybe as we get to summer, that'll be a more more good color. So, But I do want to buy another one of these just to have. But I want to bring my other blush so it's not as much of a pain because throwback, Funko Pop throwback. Because <laughs> this, this pan pile is huge. It's I have to like go there and there to get on the brush in the spots that I want to be able to put. First world problems, I put this in the wrong bag, whatever. Anyways, we're almost finished here. Actually, a little bit of a shorter alley chat, but I don't think it's the record shortest. I know there's been some times where I neglect to film and then I have to do it before the streams on Saturday and I'm like, and I have to rush, but. Decently paced alley chat. Feel like we've had some good talks. Good memes. Anyway, back to Naruto, though. I feel like every time we meet a new member of the Akatsuki, I'm like, you suck. You're horrible. And then I'm like... And then they get defeated, and we're like, we move past the battle, and I'm like, can we go back to them? They were pretty cool. <laughs> But every time it's like first impression, they're not very good at first impressions on me. I'm like, I hate you. You're horrible. You're horrible. You're horrible. And it's like, you know, come here. I'll give you a hug. Just don't try to convert me to your Jashin religion. But I'm like, yeah, anyways. I was browsing the heat on tag on Tumblr the, the, last night. I said the other night and I was like, no, it was last night. 
A lot of cute fan art. A lot of cute Akatsuki fan art. Where I'm like, oh, they're so small. Protect them. And I'm like, no, they're horrible, but protect them. All right. I think we've had enough Naruto ranting and raving here. Let's go ahead and lock this up. Where is my super, my broken Super Junior fan? I won't get rid of it. I just kind of hold it at that little... Not It's not little anymore. It used to be smaller. Now I can fit like almost my whole hand. Look. I mean, look, we got Lance Bleach coming back. I found a Garganta. Anyways. Too many anime references in this video. But you know what? The theme of the channel is me bringing it back. That's what I talk about. Whatever comes to mind. I didn't have a plan here. I didn't have anything specific to talk about. So we just talk about whatever comes in. And whatever comes into my mind, whether that be a let's make a bleach joke about a hole opening up in the universe and something crawling through, then so be it, right? Which really makes me wonder. The audience of the Trove, you guys are very interesting. I don't know. I feel like probably 90%, at least 90% of the people that watch these videos have no clue what I'm talking about 75% of the time. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys enjoy it. But uh, let me just take a quick glance, make sure everything looks okay. Eyes, check. Cheeks, check. A little bit of red nose, check. I look good today. This looks good. This is a good outfit. Anyways, that does it for me here. Let me go ahead and wrap it up a little bit under 30 minutes. Let's see if we can keep it that way or I'll bloviate myself into another five minutes or so. But I think that does it here for this episode of Alley Chat. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to go ahead and hit that like button. Comments for me, answers to any of those questions I posed to you guys throughout the video. Go ahead and leave those down below. And of course, if you're not part of the Trove family, make sure you go ahead and head and hit that little red subscribe button. I've also, well, peek into alley mind i've also been in contact i don't know i feel like some of you guys look uh if i follow anybody new on instagram and things like that i followed a lady from russia who has had some really cool jojo cosplay she's actually open for commissions i'm talking with her i have a couple ideas so i'm plotting for some future cosplays so go ahead and leave some suggestions in the comments down below i have a lot of things on my mind and i'm curious to see what you guys think i might be interested in or what you'd like to see for me but I'm very excited for whatever that will be. I know I had planned on doing a new cosplay for the 5,000 sub special, but I want to make sure I get something actually nice. We've been growing rather quickly here. So, you know, I don't want to just have to go ahead and take the plunge on like a, a cheapo cosplay. That doesn't look very good just to have it in time. So I do intend to have it for that. But if it's late, I'd rather have good looking cosplay, have something that looks nice, something cool rather than just like, something pieced together real quick that kind of looks like garbage. So we'll see. Might have to bump that to a 10K special. We'll see that. Big dreams. Will we ever get there? I don't know. Not if I keep talking about all this random stuff. But that does it here for this video. Before I sign on out, I do have to give a big shout out to all of our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much, you guys, for your above and beyond support. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. To have five ultimate excavators, Dustin Archuleta, Jack Prez, Keith Muta, Mark Lennon, and Stephen Olivo, one gemstone miner of Andon, and three crystal collectors, Daryl Wise, David Mounts, and Stephen Bly. But thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you all join me here again on Tuesday as we unearth some more treasures here on Allie's Treasure Trove. Take care, everybody. Lots I want to film, so let me go ahead and get on out of here real quick. Thank you for watching. Take care, and hope to catch you in the next episode. Bye.